My name is John Ross with The Art of Retouching Studio. In this video, we're going to cover a topic that nobody ever talks about, DPI, PPI, and LPI. More specifically, dots per inch, pixels per inch, and lines per inch. In the magazine and advertising industry, they throw around the acronym DPI all the time. Designers and advertisers keep telling everyone that they need a 300 DPI image. However, more often than not, they really mean a 300 PPI image. But before I can answer where the 300 DPI actually came from, we need to start at the beginning. So let's do a deeper dive into what happens when your photograph makes it onto the front cover of a magazine. Each of the items in the next section, DPI, PPI, and LPI, are related to printing on a press. If you think you may be doing work for a magazine or advertising agency, we need to ensure that you speak the language and supply the files correctly. The reason I talk about this is because it comes up later at point in time when we start talking about resolution. The first thing I want to talk about is PPI, which is pixels per inch. When you look at a non-raw image, it is made up of pixels. Non-raw images like JPEGs, TIFFs, and PSDs will store color information on red, green, and blue channels. Separately, these channels are viewed in black and white, just like the old film days. But once those channels get merged together, you get a full color image. When you zoom into an image really close, you'll find that it's made up of pixels. These pixels are really tiny squares that are made up of a single value from 0 to 255 for each of these colors, red, green, and blue. Let me give you an example. In order to create the color black, all three colors, red, green, and blue, will have a value of 0. By contrast, if you want white, then the values for red, green, and blue would all be 255. For yellow, the values could be red 255, green 255, and blue 0. Any of those values could change and give you a slightly different hue for the color in question. Whether your image is stored in the computer or viewed on a screen, it is made up of pixels. This means that Photoshop works in PPI, which is pixels per inch. If you zoom in close, you can tell that images are made up of pixels. Each of these tiny squares holds information based off of the red, green, and blue values. CR2, NEF, ARW, and DNG are examples of raw file formats. Raw files themselves are not made up of actual pixels. However, in order to view your camera's raw files, the data needs to be interpreted and displayed on the screen as red, green, and blue pixels. Photoshop works in pixels per inch. Your monitor works in pixels per inch. Your phone works in pixels per inch. Even the display on your camera's LCD screen will display the images as pixels per inch. When I pull up my own screen display information for this particular computer, it says that the resolution of the monitor is 3840 pixels wide. The height of the display is 2160 pixels tall. This is referred to as a 4K display. If we went down in height pixels to 1440, that is referenced as a 2K display. If we go even smaller, 1920 by 1080 is simply referred to as an HD display. All of the numbers mean one thing. How many pixels are used to display the digital image? When it comes to your actual images, it's basically the same thing. If you have a 24 megapixel camera, your image size equals 24 million pixels. If you have a 45 megapixel camera, your image size is 45 million pixels. Raw files themselves don't technically use pixels, as we have been discussing, but all images, even raw, are displayed as pixels per inch. Later, we will go into resolution, and that's where we will be putting all this pixel information to good use. This brings us around to DPI, or dots per inch. DPI is exclusive to printed media. So far, we've only talked about working with pixels in a digital format. However, something that you're probably more familiar with hearing is someone mentioning DPI. What they often say is they're looking for a 300 DPI image. DPI stands for dots per inch, which is different from pixels per inch. This is because pixels are digital, dots are ink on paper. I just want to be clear that conceptually they're different yet equal. When someone says, I want something in 300 DPI, more often than not, they really mean 300 PPI, which is pixels, because that's what you're going to send them, a digital file. The only thing you need to know is that it more than likely if someone says they want DPI, they probably mean PPI. Another big difference between PPI and DPI is the digital color versus printed color. This leads us back to the initial question, what are dots per inch? Well, if you're talking paper, you're talking about little dots of ink. While your inkjet printer works differently than a laser printer or a big printing press, the basic concept is the same. RGB, red, green, and blue, is how your eyes see color and how your digital displays show color. However, most, not all, but most, 
Printers use what is called CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. It works like this. A printer will put down a single cyan dot on a piece of paper. They will then put down a single magenta dot on the piece of paper at a different location. You will then have a cyan dot and a magenta dot on a big white piece of paper. However, if the printer puts down both the cyan and magenta dots on nearly the same location, then visually to us, it'll look like a single purple dot. So, when you put down a regular spray of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black onto a piece of paper, they will interact with each other. That gives us different shades and hues of color. For an inkjet printer, it's like a shotgun scatter shot, meaning the ink is kind of spattered all over the paper, yet it looks the way that it's supposed to to us. The inkjet is not actually using DPI. Rather, it relies on details provided from the PPI of the image when you hit the print button. When we are talking about DPI, which is dots per inch, we are specifically referring to a printing press for a magazine, newspaper, or other large print media runs. But before I finish my thoughts on DPI, we need to introduce LPI. LPI stands for lines per inch. We are actually talking about a line screen on film or a printing plate. Think of it as a controlled grid for dots. Inkjets, laser printers, and digital printers will go from computer to printer and then to paper. But unlike those types, printing presses use a very deliberate size dot spread out across a grid pattern. They are very small and hard to see. But if you look up really close at cheaply printed magazine or a newspaper, you should be able to see the little dots with your naked eyes. In order to print magazines that are produced in such large quantities, you need a printing press. This is where DPI, dots, and LPI, lines, are important. The lines per inch values go from a low number to a high number, typically 65 lines per inch up to 200 lines per inch. The lower the line screen number, the lower the quality of the paper. The higher the line screen number, the higher the quality of the paper. Let's just say you're going to print a newspaper. The paper is very cheap, often recycled, and otherwise easy to tear. This means that if you put too much ink into one area, the ink is going to expand and bleed through the paper. Because of this, you need a controlled way of putting ink on that paper. We can do that by controlling how many dots we put down and how big they actually are. Often, newspapers will use 65 line screen. When we start talking about magazines, more often than not, it would be printed at a 133 line screen, which simply means that the paper is better. It can absorb more ink, which means you can put down more dots. And when you can add more dots, that ultimately means you get a sharper looking image because those dots are smaller and there are more of them. The result is that it's going to be sharper and more vibrant in color. When you go up to the actual front and back cover of the magazine, quite often they would use a 150 line screen because the paper is often thicker. They can put on a nice clear coating across the top and protect the ink. That's what gives it the shine when you walk by it on the newsstand. So you can have an image printed in a magazine at a lower 65 line screen and look poor quality, be inside of a magazine at 133 line screen looking good, and it could also be on the front cover at 150 line screen and look stunning. Then you have the expensive magazines that cost twice as much like National Geographic. The higher quality papers, they can bring up the line screen to 175, 200 or even higher. Ultimately, for every quality grade the paper goes up, the more ink it can hold. This means the printer can raise the lines per inch, which raises the dots per inch. When they do that, the images you have are printed in ads or the magazine will look sharper and brighter. You may not be in control of the printing quality, but you want to be sure to supply your digital PPI images at the highest quality you possibly can. And all of this brings me back around to why you may have heard the term 300 DPI. I explained they really mean 300 PPI. So. Based on all the information you have now, you may still be asking, why 300 DPI? The answer is actually quite simple. Let's say your image is going to print on the front cover of the magazine. Great, you say, so you think you only need to supply a 150 PPI file to match the 150 LPI print, right? Wrong. They may want to use your image on the front cover, but the designer wants to use half of it. So they're going to blow it up 200%. So. Your 300 PPI image is being divided in half, which means it's actually going to be printed at 150 DPI, and that is what matches the 150 LPI. Boom, math. And this leads us into our next major topic, bit depth and tonal range. Be sure to check out that video as well. Now that you fully understand the reasoning for 300 DPI, what do you think about Adobe's way of defaulting to 240 PPI? Do you think it's enough? Do you change that value? Leave your comments below. If you found this video helpful, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can find more tips and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.